Hi, welcome to Guitar Time. I'm Robert Noel. We are continuing with chord progressions. This is chord progression number four. So, this chord progression deals with another new chord for you, the B7 chord. So B7, well, B7, you're going to need your second finger on B, your first finger on the first fret D string, which is a D sharp or E flat, your third finger on A, you're going to have an open B string, and then a fourth finger. Notice I've got all these fingers next to the fret. Two, one, three, open, four. This is sometimes a difficult chord for people to learn. It's movable. We can move it to C and later on other positions. So it's a movable chord form to B7. Very important chord, okay? Another new chord we have here, maybe it's not new to you, but you should know it, is the famous D chord. Everybody knows a D chord, right? Open, first finger, third finger, second finger. You want to try to make it look like a triangle because you want the first finger next to the fret, the third finger on D next to the fret, your first, second finger um, right up next to the fret on the second fret. That would be F sharp. Your notes are D, A, D, and F sharp. Four note chord. We learn to do... We learn to do things with this pattern, too. So it's a great pattern. The D chord. And then you have the D7, which is like kind of like the D, D chord you just played, but in reverse, where you have open D, second finger A, first finger C, and then third finger F sharp. Do you hear the difference? D, D7. So it's got a flavor to it, the seventh flavor. So this looks just like a triangle. My fingers are right up next to the fret. Not on the fret, I won't get a sound but I'm right up against the frets. Finger placement is so important. So now you know D, and from other lessons, you know D minor, and now you know D7. Three types of D chord. Major, minor, and a seventh chord. Okay, so I'm going to do a basic strum on progression four. Here we go. Not too fast, one, Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, B7. Here comes E minor. I'm preparing for the C chord already. G. Getting ready for that D chord. Here it comes. Ready for A minor? And D7. We're back to the beginning. Let's do a down, up, down, up. Seven. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. Finger placement. One and two. Be on time. One. Prepare ahead of time. Come up, down. All fingers down at once. Up, down. So hopefully you start working with these chords. You know, sometimes you have to work. You can take these chord progressions and maybe just work uh, G to B7, back and forth. The first chord and the second chord. And then B7 to G till you get good at lifting those fingers and coming down and being accurate. Then B7 to E minor, B7 to E minor, E minor to B7. Then maybe you go E minor to C. E minor to C, C to E minor, C to E minor. Then I'll take the next set of chords, G to D, G to D, D to G, D to G, G to D. You get good at this. D to A minor. Got to strum the right amount of strings too. Got to be accurate there too. D minor, D to A minor, D to A minor, A minor to D, A minor to D. A minor to D7, A minor to D7, D, 
7 to A minor. And then if I can go G, B7, E minor, C, G, B, A minor, D7. All those chords, bam, 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 bam. Hey, I'm getting them. I'm getting good at them. There's a lot of ways to work on your chords. So also on this, we want to learn to do what I call adding a bass line. This is really important. So once you've got acquainted and can strum these chords, basically, we're going to hit the root of each chord on the first beat. So listen to me. I'll demonstrate. So I hit the G. G. Now, since I'm hitting that down with my pick, my next drum will be up. And I'm going to continue one and two and three and four. And when I go to the B7, I'm going to hit the root note, B. B, up, down, up, down. Then the E of the E minor, E, down, and then my strumming continues, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, then the C chord, which is going to be down, up, down, up, and on the first beat I hit the G, up, down, up, then the D of the D chord, D, up, so I'm hitting the bass line, the root note of each chord, the A of the A minor, and now the D of the D7. So on the first beat, we're hitting the, the root. G, up, down, up. B. Sounds nice. E. C, up, down, up, down, up. I have a bass line going on now. D, up, down, up, down, up, down. And I hit the D. Back to G. B7. E of the E minor. C. G. D. And the A. D. So you have to start this by practicing slow, and eventually you'll get fast, faster, like I was playing. The next exercise is getting a little bit more on that bass line. So we want to play the bass note on the first beat and the third beat. So listen to my count and listen to the bass note, the root note of each chord. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and one. Drums, down ups, downs, and hitting the bass. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That would be on every downbeat. Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. One and two and 
So you're going to work on that. You're getting your rhythms together. You're learning how to count, tap your foot, building your speed, and your chords should be starting to get good. You should, the new chords, well, you always got to work on them. Like I said, you can work on them very slowly in groups and then put the whole progression together. All right. Don't get frustrated. It takes time. And your fingers have to build the dexterity. So by working on scales and chords, your fingers start to get nip. So they just, they feel they want to play. They want to do things. So if you're consistent with your practicing and learning to count and working on these techniques, they start coming together, I guarantee you. But it's learning how to practice and learning how to work with yourself without getting frustrated, but being patient, but being diligent. All right. Stay tuned.